Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. In today's video, we're going to be assessing some more teaching from Benny Hinn. I've entitled this video, False Promises for Profit, and in it, I hope that we will see the progression that often takes place where false teachers twist scripture passages, they use it to tell you that you have some promise for God, and ultimately it results in them making a lot of money. So you'll need to hang in there with me as we go through this progression today. But first, if you'd like to help promote Christian content on YouTube and get this message out to more people, please take a second right now to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. All right, we have a handful of clips that we need to check out today. After each one, I'll come back, we'll look at scripture, and we'll compare what Benny Hinn is saying to the Word of God. So let's go ahead and jump into our first clip. And I'm sure you know that blessed verse or blessed uh, portion of the Word of God, but let's begin by reading, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, that's the church, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Now, this promise is given to the church only, not to the world, that God is going to do something powerful in the first month. The first month is always Passover, the time of Passover. Always the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Now, I want to go back and explain something to you about what it means when God says these words in verse 23. He hath given you the former rain, moderately, and he'll cause to come down the former and the latter together. The former rain uh, establishes harvest time, uh, sorry, seed time. Former rain always seed time, and harvest time is always the, the latter rain. So what God is saying here is seed time and harvest will happen at the same time. There will be no in-between. So today in the natural, they sow their farms in the spring, they reap in the fall. Well, the summer, nobody does anything. Spiritually speaking, God says, I'm going to cause you to sow and reap in one month. That's quick recovery. All right, guys, Joel chapter 2 is a wonderful passage of Scripture for us to examine. If you've ever heard of the latter rain movement, much of their theology comes from this passage. But before we get to our assessment of Benny Hinn and his handling of this text, we ourselves need to understand what is happening in the book of Joel. So Joel is addressed to the southern kingdom of Judah, and it begins in chapter 1 with a pronouncement of judgment coming from the Lord. And this judgment is going to be an invasion or a swarm of locusts. So locusts are going to come and they're going to eat up all the crops and it's going to be really bad. So that's judgment from God because of the sins of the southern kingdom. The back half of chapter one is the prophet speaking and telling the people and calling them to repentance. In chapter two, we have much the same thing. It starts with a pronouncement of judgment and then a call to repentance. And in verse 17, which is the last verse in this section of uh, the call to repentance, it is assumed after that that the people have have now repented and they they do turn from their wicked ways they cry out to God and so starting in verse 18 is when you get this passage where it's describing what is now going to happen now that the people of Judah, the southern kingdom, have repented and have cried out to the Lord. So with that background and that understanding of what is taking place in the book of Joel, let's now get to Benny Hinn's handling of it. So he started in verse 23 and he said, Be glad, O children of Zion. And he said, That's the church. No, friends, it's not the church. It's the children of Zion. It's the people of Jerusalem, of Judah, of the southern kingdom. So this passage of scripture is not addressed to the church today. Now, does it have meaning to us? Yes, there is much that we can glean and learn from it. But is it directly stated to us? 
No, it is not. It is stated to the southern kingdom of Judah at this time. So he's already off because he is saying this applies to you because you're a part of the church when this is not written, written directly to you. And then he goes on. He talks about the Lord uh, pouring down the, the rain. He says the former and the latter rain. In my translation, it says the early and the latter rain. And there's a couple of things that I want to point out here. So did you notice a couple of times when he talks about the early or the former rain, he says moderately. See, this is a big part of latter rain teaching. It's that the early, the former rain was moderate, but there's going to be abundant blessing that comes out in the latter rain. And he also went on to say that this has to do with seed time and harvest taking place simultaneously. So to put it all together, basically what Benny Hinn is saying here is that God is about to have seed time and harvest take place in your life and they're going to happen simultaneously and it's going to be in abundance. So all the things that you have needed recovery for, there's going to be quick recovery because now he's bringing the early and the latter rain. Friends, one, again, this is not addressed to you, but that's not even what it's talking about here. When it talks about the former rain and the latter rain or the early rain and the latter rain, it's speaking of actual rain because when a farmer would go out to plant their crops, they would expect there'd be a lot of rain at the beginning of the season when they would plant and months later at the end of the season when they reap. Well, they had not had that happen because there was a famine on the land that was also a part of the judgment that God was sending against the people. And so now he's saying, because you have repented and cried out to me and turned to me, now I'm going to give you the rain so that you can grow your crops and that you can um, get back the things that you lost during this time. So this does not have to do with seed time and harvest taking place at the same time in our lives and quick recovery for us. So Denny Hinn is off to a horrific start, twisting passages of scripture, allegorizing them, and making them say things that they most definitively do not say. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump into our second clip. Now, let me also say something else here. Verse 25, I will restore to you the years, the locust and the canker worm, that's the crawling locust by the way when when the bible says locust is it means swarming locust canker worm are crawling locust and palmer worm are chewing locust so whenever we read about the locust the canker worm palmer worm it's all locust but the first one is the swarming the second one is the crawling, and the third one is the chewing or devouring. So think about what I just said, that locust is symbolic of demonic powers that swarm, that crawl, and that devour. And that's what's happening in a lot of people's lives. They've seen such uh, devastation such losses that have happened so quickly. But just as quickly, God will restore it back all double. All right, here we have the same thing from Benny Hinn. Now he's going down to chapter 2, verse 25, and he is allegorizing the locust. He said, the locusts are symbolic of demonic powers. And he says that because there is demonic influence uh, working against us and attempting to tempt us and take things from us in our lives. And so therefore, since we have demonic oppression and demonic power working against us, we have our locusts. God is going to get rid of them and he is going to bring quick recovery and double. Friends, you need to know locusts in this story are not symbolic of demonic powers. Locusts are symbolic of locusts. They were actual locusts, the insect that was coming and eating the crop from the people of Judah. So again, he is allegorizing the story and making it seem like it has some connection to you. And now he's telling you that you can have quick recovery, double of everything that the enemy has taken from you. Well, of course, who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want to hear that? So people, many people are now being drawn in by this sort of teaching. Unfortunately, it is not biblical. So let's continue and see where Benny Hinn goes from here. So the Bible states, we are to regain all that the thief has stolen. It's your right to regain. 
as a Christian, you have that right. In Exodus 22, and I don't want to read the whole portion, but I think it'll do you great to read verse 1 to 9, about how you deal with a thief, what he has to restore, because the thief must restore all that he has stolen, all that he has stolen. Satan has to restore everything sevenfold, not just double, not just double. Seven times, it says, seven times. Wow. Think about that, people of God. It's time. Oh, I love this part. It's time we subpoena the devil, bring an indictment against him, find him guilty, and force him to make restitution in the name of Jesus. We have the authority. Did not Jesus say, I give you power over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy? And nothing shall by any means harm you? All right, there's quite a bit we need to unpack there, but Benny Hinn starts in Exodus 22, and he is saying that there is biblical precedent that we recover all that has been stolen from us and that we can demand even more. Well, there's a couple of things that I would like to point out. Number one, I didn't put this as a part of the clip. I cut it out because it would have been too long, but he is uh, referencing John 10, where it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so he is basically saying, hey, Satan is the thief who has stolen from us. And so we can demand payment and more back from him. Well, friends, you may need to know this, that John chapter 10, when it talks about the thief, who comes to steal and kill and destroy, it's actually not referring to Satan. It is talking to the failed leaders of Israel, people like the Pharisees. So that's number one. But then if we go to Exodus 22 and we look at the first handful of verses there that he was talking about, friends, that is a part of the civil law to the nation of Israel. So this was civil law that was being given in the theocracy of ancient Israel. That means that it no longer applies for today. Meaning when somebody steals from you, I as a Christian do not go to that person if somebody were to steal from me and demand they give it back and then times four. And there were actually different amounts that you were to give back depending on the circumstances. So once again, he is twisting scripture and his main takeaway is that Satan has stolen things from you. He could have stolen your finances, could have stolen your joy, a relationship. I mean, it could be whatever. He says Satan has stolen from you and you can recover it back and you can demand everything additional on top of it. And he is saying we need to put legal demands and we need to take up our authority over Satan. And he says, did not Jesus say that we have authority to do this sort of thing? And he quoted Luke chapter 10. But if you read that passage in Luke chapter 10, you will see that Jesus is speaking to the 72 disciples that he sent out. And when he sent them out, he specifically told those 72, that they had authority on that trip to do those specific things. That is not a passage of scripture that says every believer has the ability to do all of those things and we have authority over Satan. And in fact, if that really bothers you and you're like, well, what? We don't have power. We do have power over Satan. Friends, I just want to read you one passage. This is from the book of Jude. It's just one chapter long, uh, but we're going to look at verses eight through 10 and see this passage of scripture that is talking about the ungodly and what the ungodly do. It says, yet in like manner, these people also relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. So we see the archangel Michael, when he is in a struggle with uh, Satan himself, he doesn't speak to Satan and say, I rebuke you. I take authority over you. No, he appeals to God. The Lord rebuke you. And it's saying that these ungodly people, they do the opposite. They're the ones who are taking authority over Satan and binding him and doing all these things. I'm putting it in a modern context for us. So scripture very clearly speaks against that. So once again, Benny Hinn making false promises on behalf of the Bible that God himself did not make to us, that we were going to recover all 
in this life. But now this is perhaps the most important part. So he has said a lot of things, again, that sound really good to people. People go through difficulties in life. Maybe we do go through financial struggles or relational struggles and things of that nature. And people have a desire to see those things rectified. And Benny Hinn seems to be preying upon that by twisting passages of scripture and making it seem like if you listen to what he is saying, you can get all of that back right now. And I always bring that up because I want people to understand that I, I get why people want to listen to this sort of thing. It sounds good for them. They want to recover everything that they feel like they have lost. And so regardless of the fact that the Bible says that all things will be made new and will be made perfect in eternity and that we will have struggles in the here and now. So we know this is unbiblical. You know, I do understand why they buy into it, but I want you to see here where this is going to go because Benny Hinn has said, hey, you can have all this stuff. You can get your quick recovery. But what do you think is going to be the solution? What do you think you're going to have to do in order to make sure that this breakthrough, this recovery takes place? You can probably already guess, but let's see it now. It is very important. The worst thing anyone can do today is stop giving to God. This is not the time to stop giving because if you stop giving, you'll stop living. If you stop giving, you'll stop living. This is the time to give so you can live because God is looking at your faith now. What did Jesus say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteous cause. And all these things you need in life will be added unto you. Read Matthew 6, 33. Put God's interest ahead of yours. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all the things you need on earth will be added. You that have businesses, you that have, uh, uh, you know, work and jobs and you that lost your job. This is the time to give, I'm telling you. So you in business will keep your business going strong and you that are out of work will see no lack. No lack. No lack in Jesus' name, no lack. So do it today. You can sow your seed right now. Benny Hinn Ministries. You, you can do it right on the app you're watching me on or uh, uh, on the platform. You can text it to BHM45777. I think I gave the right one. Yeah, That's BHM45777 is how you can text your seed. Or just go to benin.org online. I'm telling you, saints, when we stop giving, we stop living. And when we continue giving, we continue living. And so, of course, if you want this quick recovery in your life, if you want everything to be restored to you plus more, you need to give money to Benny Hinn. Friends, unfortunately, this is almost always the way that it goes. And this is my real heart in doing this video. I mentioned this a lot on my channel, but I don't want people to have the wrong idea of why I'm doing this. It's not because I think that I am better than Benny Hinn. Friends, I am a sinner saved by grace. If it were not for the work of God in my life, I don't even want to think about where I would be right now. It is because there are people who are being deceived by this sort of thing. They are believing these false promises that God has not actually spoken to them in the way that Benny Hinn is trying to convey. And they are sending money to Benny Hinn because they think that's the key for them getting this recovery or this breakthrough. And so people are sending their money to Benny Hinn. He is getting very wealthy off of these lies and these false teachings. And then people are often very disappointed and upset when the false promise that Benny Hinn sold to them does not happen the way that he said it would. And so I really have a heart to want to try to protect people from Benny Hinn. I love the Lord. I want people to be true followers of Jesus, and I want them to understand that he will make all things new in eternity. That does not mean that he does not intervene in the here and now. If you are facing struggles and difficulties and challenges, I encourage you to seek after the Lord, to pray, to ask for him to intervene. But we know from the word that we will have struggles in the here and now. Not everything will be Perfect. We will have difficulty. Not everything will be recovered, but eventually, one day, in eternity, 
God will make all things right and we will be with him in uh, unending joy for the rest of time. And so friends, I just really encourage you to stay away from Benny Hinn. He has been teaching false doctrine for decades now and he has made I don't even know how much money, countless millions of dollars from this sort of thing. So let's stay away from his teaching and let's certainly not send him money. All right, guys, thank you so much for checking out my channel and watching this content today. If you want to help me reach more people with this Christian content on YouTube, take a second right now to go ahead, look down below and click the subscribe button. But thanks so much for watching. And until next time, God bless.